Hey, it's that time again. It's been a month. It's time for another vlog. Well, hope you enjoyed the new vlog. <laughs> or actually the new vlog intro. And the graphic you just saw with the sound effects, I want to thank Grant McDonald up in Canada. He put that together with for us. So we officially have a brand new logo for the Haunted Tent. So Grant, thank you. Uh, getting on to vlogging. Uh, last At the end of the last vlog, I told you I would do the next vlog when I got all the foam carving done for the clown hallway wall panels. Well, since I'm vlogging, I'm done. They're, I finished the last one last night, and it is March 30th. So it's been over a month since I did, done another, have done a vlog or done an update. And as you can tell from my backdrop, I'm out in the shop with a Kaylee. She's out here with me. She's trying to talk me into coming out and playing a little bit before I actually get some work done. Uh, next step... I can start spraying. So I'm going to start spraying some paint on here. Let me get things set up and I'll run you through it. The first coat, as always, whenever I do any of my, any of my uh, foam panels, is a base coat. Uh, I want to cover up that pink on the foam with uh, so the pink doesn't show through. Usually if you shoot color over... God, I'm trying to think of the word. <sighs> Let's put it this way. The white masks the pink. <laughs> when you shoot the white on there. And then that allows you to shoot whatever color without having the pink bleed through. And that's basically what I'm going to do now. I've got uh, some paint mixed up and stuff. Just got loaded in the sprayer. And we're going to give this a nice healthy coat of white. We're going to do that to all the panels. And then we'll come back through and start uh, getting the... Uh, colors that the public's going to see. The, you know, the uh, public won't see the base coat. Okay, about two and a half hours later, we end up with this. A Kaylee in a doorway. <laughs> and these. These have all been primered. Now, as you notice on some of them, there's some runs and some drips. Uh, reason for that is when I do my primer coats, I'm using white latex paint that I water down. And I water down fairly thin. It doesn't need to fully cover. You know, as you can see here closer, you know, some of the pink is kind of showing through. That's where the paint's a little bit lighter. That's good enough. Uh, the base coat will cover that. One coat, no problem. Now, the mixture I'm using in my uh, sprayer, uh, and I'm using my paint sprayer, uh, I'm, I'm mixing the paint up a gallon at a time, and I'm mixing it at a three to one. In other words, three quarts of paint to one quart of water. And that makes the paint fairly runny. When I'm doing, oh, God, what do I want to say? When I'm doing the regular base coat, I use a tad more paint and a little less water. So it's a little thicker, and it covers better that way, if I'm spraying it. Uh, since... Uh, the majority of this is not going to be, uh, these panels are not going to be sprayed. Uh, I'll be doing it either by roller or by brush. So I won't need to dilute it at all. But uh, that's typically <laughs> what I've got. Now, uh, now normally after the panels dry, I would set them off to the side. And this is only half of them. There's 21 panels up in here in the shop at the moment. I've got another 21 still sitting in the uh, storage shed or in my uh, storage locker back there. So what I would normally do is I would come out here tomorrow, set these off to the side and get the other 21 base coated as well. Uh, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. Uh, uh, for the base colors on the panels, we're going to have the lower, deeper sections, and there's three of them on here, are going to be white. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to come out with a little bit thicker white. I'm not going to dilute it down as much. And I'm going to go back through and respray just those stripes that are going to be white. So they have their final white color on them. 
I figure I got him out. Might as well do it. And I'll be done and over with. But uh, for now, I can't do much more out of it because these are wet. So they're going to have to dry overnight. So I'm effectively done for the day. Okay, time for another segment. We're officially done with the white. <laughs> I've gone over and I gave all the panels a primer coat. And I just got done going through and getting the deeper cut stripes. Their coat of white. Uh, so now we're ready to move on to these stripes. The uh, more raised ones. And for that, we are going to use... A roller. Here, get the tag out of the way. And this is basically just one of those sponge rollers, a smaller one. And it, you know, it's about almost the same size as the uh, stripes, so I'll be good. Now, if you remember right, in the uh, when I painted the uh, panels for the uh, mausoleum, I believe it was last vlog. I think it was last vlog. It was the vlog before. I did a bobo. <laughs> I didn't have one of these. I used a regular nap, you know, the ones that had the uh, nap on them, uh, rollers to paint that. It ended up with a mess. So I made sure I got the appropriate brushes or roller this time. But this is going to be a, a two stage project. First off, I got to go over and roll the stripes, which will go quick, until I get up here to where the uh, blood's rolling down. I'm not going to be able to get the roller in there to finished painting so I'm going to have to do that by brush. So I'll be rolling and then brushing. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Or I might brush first and then roll. Who knows? I haven't gotten that far yet. But time for the next color which is going to be a shade of green. Well, what do you know? You're getting a uh, second, <laughs> second segment for today. Uh, I switched over and started doing the striping. Told you that in the last segment. Figured I'd show you what we got done. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, interesting. Uh, the wife and I decided on the green. Uh, we originally talked about doing red and blue. But we figured since we were going to have this section up in here in red, having the stripes, a different shade of red, it'd be just too much. And I didn't want blue. Blue just didn't sound right. So we went with a, a lighter green. Uh, you know, we wanted something that was going to kind of stand out. Uh, as far as the process, and I mentioned it in the other uh, earlier segment, you know, up in here where I couldn't get this roller, you know, I ended up having to do by brush, and then the main body of it, we did with a roller. Uh... A lot neater, a lot cleaner than on the mausoleum walls when I had the wrong type roller. This worked out a lot better. I still ended up with some slop here and there, you know, where I teetered the roller a little bit when I was going down and hit it. Uh, I got a couple, uh, my very first panel over there is really bad. <laughs> Took me a while to get the feel for the roller. Uh, so I'm going to have to go back. I've got uh, some touch-ups to do. Uh... I was able to get seven panels done all together. Probably going to take me 15 minutes to do the touch-ups. I mean, not anywhere near the mausoleum. It took me all day, several days, to do all the touch-ups on that one. I was using the wrong roller. So, having the right roller really works. Uh, I'm also finding when you first get them out of the package and get them into the paint, uh, they don't coat as well. You need to let the paint saturate the sponge material on here. Then they start coating a lot better. You're not pressing so hard. So, but uh, anyway, I'll give you a look at every, uh, these uh, you know, once they're all touched up and painted and what. Well, if you were been on Facebook uh, or over on my page, you would have noticed here a couple days ago. <laughs> I posted some pictures of the clown panels I'm working on. Uh, <laughs> all intents and purposes, that was only a small portion. I've still got a crap ton left to do. I just literally got done with these. I got all the panels now with the green on them. And I need to go back through. Uh, the picture I had up on Facebook showed the red up here being done. And I had the panels touched up. That's what I'm gearing up to do now. 
I've got let's see, 42 panels total, and I've got what was it? 18 of them with the blood and the touch-ups done on it. So I've got the balance of it to get done yet. So I'm going to do that. Uh, it's all brushwork. I've got red, I've got white, and i got green out. And it's just a matter of going through and, you know, painting the blood red and then touching up the white and touching what up any of the green that needs to be touched up. Just labor intensive. I'm choosing to do it by brush and not airbrush. Because I don't want to deal with a slop. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll, I'll give you guys a look in the vlog when it's finished. You know, so you can see what it looks like in the vlog. Uh, then we'll start moving on. We'll be moving on into the detailing phase. Well, another step done. Another part of the process done. Striping is done. Blood work's done up on the top. We got all the panels touched up. Don't really have the room in here to back up any further. So I got it. I just got done finishing. That's my last panel there. Now I'm gonna let these dry overnight and tomorrow we'll get in here and we'll start on the detailing. I got two more steps I need to do to the panels. And we'll cover that tomorrow. I gotta get cleaned up in here first, but I can't do that till this stuff sits overnight. Okay, next day, next step. Uh, the panels, I like the look of them, uh, especially up at the top with the blood dripping down. Uh, problem is, there's a lot going on down this way. It just looks too plain. It's green and white, green and white, green and white. I wanna add a little detail. I like the blood drip idea up there that I carved in. So what we're going to do down here is blood splatter. That's why I've got it set up on the plastic sheet. Now how I'm going to do this is I went and took some of the red paint that I used on the drips and I've got it watered down a bit. So it's more the consistency of real blood. Now I've got two different techniques I'm thinking about trying. I'm going to try this first one first and if it doesn't work I'll try the second one. But I've got it watered down and all I'm going to do is dip the paintbrush in there Come over to the panel and click it onto the panel and just let it go and see how it runs. If it doesn't run the way I want it to, uh, I'm going to try misting the panel with some water and then flicking it. The water will uh, cause the paint to run a little bit more. Uh, so we're going to give that a try. I'm going to do all the panels like this and I'll just kind of detail them out a little bit. Okay, right, yesterday I got the first half of the wall splattered. And from this distance, it's really not showing up on the camera. <laughs> so we'll get a little closer. And it's just some fine splattering on the walls. Some walls are heavier than others. I did not use the uh, water technique. I was going to figure if I didn't like the look of, look of this, I was going to spray the panels down with water and then do the splattering techniques on it. But I like the look of this a lot better. Uh, this is only about half the panels in here. I've got to uh, get these out of here. And then i got the other half to do. And it took me about a half hour, 45 minutes. So it's not a real lengthy process. The longest part of the whole process is waiting for them to dry. Which is overnight. So uh, I'm going to get these out of the shop. And then i still got the other half back in my storage locker. And we're going to get out here and get those splattered. Uh, let them dry overnight. And then hopefully tomorrow we can start on the last painting technique. Which is going to be aging the panels. Alright, now we got the shop put back together and set up for the next stage. And we've got our next victim up on the table. It's time for the last painting step. And that is aging. Now, to age these... Since they're supposed to be tent walls, canvas side walls. That's what I'm trying to simulate. Uh, with doing all the tents and stuff, I'm very familiar with how the canvas ages. Usually it ages in one of two ways, or I could do both of them at the same time. One, depending on the material, the canvas can yellow. Or it can kind of gray out, depending on the material. And I've even, even seen them do both. 
uh, depending on whether they're in the sun and what have you. Uh, what I've decided to do is we're going to try to yellow the walls. In other words, I and I'm not going to paint the panels yellow and paint over everything. I'm going to do a kind of a I guess a tea staining kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to I've got a gallon of almost a gallon of water. I'm going to add some yellow paint to it to give it a, uh, a healthy yellow cast and then we're going to spray the panels with it uh, you know to give them kind of a yellow tinting to it you know so you'll still be able to see the red blood spatters the white the red the green and whatever but I'll have a yellow cast to it and that's going to be our aging technique now I've got like I said, a thing of water, and there is water in there. I've got some yellow paint. I'm going to add, to start with, three ladles of yellow paint to the water. We'll get it mixed up good. We'll put it in the sprayer, and we'll spray it on the panel. Now, as far as air pressure on the compressors, uh, normally when I'm spraying paint, I have it set for 90 pounds worth of pressure. Since I am shooting water, and that's a heck of a lot thinner than what the paint is, I'm going to have to adjust my pressure on the air compressor. If I don't, I'll go through that gallon of paint, or gallon of water, in a heartbeat. So I'm going to dial the pressure down. We're going to try dialing it down to about 60 pounds worth of pressure. I'm hoping uh, to get through two, uh, two panels with one container up here on the uh, sprayer is about the ratio I want. So I'm going to have to play around a little bit with the pressure as I'm spraying it to get what I need. Hey, just getting back out in the shop. Uh, it's the next day. Uh, we got the uh, panels that we did yesterday are dry, so I'm in the process of moving them out. And I remembered I wanted to give you guys a look at the way they came out there you go there the white definitely has a yellowish look to it but i'm noticing with doing the yellow it's making the red on the panels the blood splatters pop a bit more and a little bit closer inspection i don't know if it's showing up on cameras but you can see some drips and runs and stuff in it i want that <laughs> And then after these panels have sat outside for a month or two and aged naturally outside, these things will look perfect. So uh, right now, but uh, once these are set outside for a couple of months, they'll be fine. Uh, I need to get these panels I just gave you a glimpse of out of here so I can get the rest of the panel sprayed. Hey, welcome to the last segment for this project. Yes, I did say last segment we're finally at the end of the project got all the panels here they're finished with the exception of one thing uh i need to take one of each project and you can see the difference on the blood here i got one that's hooking to the right and that one it's hooking to the left in the center i gotta take one panel from each of these and cut it down the half i need four one foot wide panels so I'm going to do that on the table saw, which means i got to get the table saw pulled out. And then the, uh, after that's done, these can get put away into their stockpile. They are done. They are finished. I do have one other step I need to do, and I've already kind of started on it, and that's the fasteners. What I use uh, to mount the panels to uh, the partition walls when I put them up in the haunt. And I wanted to kind of go over that. What I am using is a uh, inch and a half to two inch wood screw and if I use just a screw so I'm using a trick I, I got from Rich Dupre uh, aka Ghoulish Cop on YouTube uh, years ago uh, back in the day when I first started doing the foam panels I was using a metal washer uh, on the panels and you know on the screws to hold the panels to the walls and it got expensive quick uh, I was using a fender washer at the time you know the big flat round ones those things are not cheap 
uh, he came up with a cheaper way. He went down to Home Depot. And I think for like 20, I think they're like 20 bucks. You can get these round plastic capped roofing nails. Basically, it's a red washer with a, a nail sticking through it that they use for roofing. Uh, you can get these buckets of them. You know, 2,500 of them in there. For like 20 bucks. And you just take the nails out of it and then you can use the washers on your screws. Like I got there. And uh, yeah, they work perfect uh, for the proce uh, process and it's a lot cheaper. Uh, to get 2,500 fender washers, mm, you're looking at several hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> So a lot cheaper, 20, 20 bucks worth versus several hundred. But what I've got to do now uh, with these, uh, these are my uh, reds. They'll be going up in the top corners where the blood are. I've got to spray these the same color as the blood so they blend in. For uh, down the length of the panel in the green, I've got these here. And these need to be spray, sprayed green and then they both get set off to the side to dry and then in a day or two I come out, put them in a Ziploc baggie, put them in with the rest of my fasteners. I've got a huge tub full of the spray different colors to go with the different panels I've done. Uh, but other than that, that, that's, you know, I've got to cut the two panels, i got to spray these, and then i got to get all the panels put away. So basically the project is done, finally. Uh, but I'm going to bring this to a close. I've rambled enough through this whole process. We're going to say, stay spooky and stay toxic.